Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another weird news report. It's so exciting. I'm yet again cowering underneath my bed in anticipation of the scary, scary news. Uh, let's just get started with our first story, which is about carp orgies and herpes. I know, very exciting. Um, apparently, there's an invasive species uh, hanging out in Australia. Uh, the Asian carp, is that what it is? It's some kind of carp anyways. The Asian carp? Yes? Yes? Anyway, it just says carp. I don't know. Anyways, uh, the Australian government is studying, um, or, or, or contemplating, right, infecting uh, this species of carp, the invasive species of carp, which like is horrible for the environment, destroys uh, native, uh, native plants and animals. Very, very bad. Uh, the Australian government is thinking about infecting these buggers with herpes. Uh, apparently, these carp uh, just have massive, like, orgies. <laughs> massive carp orgies. Uh, apparently, that's a thing that they do. Carp orgies. Um, carp meet often in large group, uh, groups. Did you know that? That's weird. Uh, but uh, they're thinking that the herpes will spread quickly throughout all of the carp uh, and kill all of them. Um, and, and this is like not the first thing they thought of. Apparently, they've used they've used explosives to try to kill carp and poisons and traps and electrical currents. Nothing has worked to to kill these damn carps. But maybe maybe the herpes virus is powerful enough. To wipe these uh, carp from the from from Australia, right? Um, what they said something about the herpes virus in this uh, article that I wanted to read. Like it's a, it's a type of uh, herpes that only affects carp, right? It doesn't affect other species. Uh, they've thought of that. They have thought of everything. Uh, they thought like, wait, this might be bad if it gets out. Uh, and all the all our fish are are have herpes. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is a very serious article. Um, the, the other thing they've been talking about is like, um, what do they do with all the dead fish? There's going to be so many dead carp. There could be two hundred thousand tons uh, in southeastern Australia. Uh, well, it, it says it could be as high as three hundred fifty-six thousand tons. Um, and it's like that much dead carp could like have negative effects of the water quality um so they're like we need to like collect all these dead carp and like do something with them like maybe like eat them although it's not eaten like carp aren't eaten very often in australia because it's kind of weird or, or you can make them into fertilizer who wants who wants to eat uh, today on the menu herpes carp uh, uh, carp killed with herpes, a little unconventional. Um, yeah, I, I'm done with this story. I think we've covered this enough. Let's move on to this, which is in, uh, equally interesting as herpes carp, in my opinion. Um, Spanish bishop resigns to pursue relationship with satanic-tinged erotic fiction author. So there's this guy named Xavier Noel. Um, he was, apparently he was like Spain's youngest bishop, that says right here, uh, at only 41 years old. Um, that doesn't seem that young to me. I thought, like, how, how old are bishops normally? Like, what, 50 years old? 60 years old? Uh, like, uh, this is, this is just, like the thoughts that I'm having right now. Like, if you're like 60 years old and you've just become a bishop, you surely are not that far away from retirement. Although, do bishops retire? I guess you do see a lot of old bishops. This is not the point of, of this article, though. This guy is, uh, this is, this is surprising, right? This guy is, like, pretty conservative. Like, he's against, like, you know, like, gay marriage and, like, I don't know, like, um, against abortion. Um, <laughs> uh, ultra conservative. Uh, he does exorcism. Extra, extra, wow. Ex he's an extracist. Extra extracist? I don't know. I'm sorry. Wow, what a great news report this is. Um, anyways, uh, apparently he resigned a couple, uh, uh, just a recent bit ago because of personal uh, reasons, right? 
And it's pretty surprising because he's like, he seems to be a pretty successful bishop. He's the youngest bishop ever. He's uh, in Spain, probably. He's met with the Pope. Um, but apparently, uh, there have been some news sites that have reported that he has fallen for a author of uh, a satanic tinged erotic fiction author named Sylvia Caballo. I don't know. I don't know where they get this information from uh, because it's pretty surprising. Uh, Kabbalul, of course, uh, author of famous books like The Hell of Gabriel's Lust, um, which, which promises a journey into sadism, madness, and lust in a struggle between good and evil. God and Satan was a plot to shake one's values and religious beliefs. Now, <laughs> now that seems like a good book. I am interested. I'll add that to my list. Um, but anyways, this is just a very, very, very uh, surprising, considering his, his uh, this bishop. This is this is a bishop. First of all, he's a ultra conservative bishop, and he's fallen for this uh, this 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 satanic tinged erotic fiction author. Um, but there have been, like, I didn't realize that it was just, like, some, uh, news articles, like, pointing this out, like, like, is, is this just speculation? Is this based off of anything? I'm sorry, I don't have the answers. I actually don't read the articles ahead of time before filming. <laughs> so I'm just finding this out as along with you. <laughs> Another article was saying that he was, um, his, his, you know, uh, ultra-conservative views may have made him unpopular enough to resign. Apparently not a po very popular bishop. Um, now that is surprising. And this is my favorite uh, reason for why he resigned. Forget all that other stuff, right? Uh, this is probably the most my favorite, that he is himself possessed by a demon. Um... You know what? That's probably it. Um, he is probably possessed, this poor, poor Xavier Noel uh, bishop. Well, let's just move on. We spent too much time on this. Um, the hospital staff must swear off Tylenol and Tums to get religious vaccine exemption. So apparently, like, um, did you know that there's a, a lot of hospitals that like their uh, workers to be vaccinated so that they, you know, don't give their patients COVID and also don't get COVID themselves. Yeah, that's probably pretty good. Um, but there's some that don't like that. Did you know that? Uh, um, and there's some that are, are trying to, like, get a vaccine uh, exemption based off of a variety of reasons, like maybe religious reasons or... Um, yeah, okay, this is what this covers, is, uh, maybe because of medical reasons, right, too, and that, that might be a le legitimate one, but for religious reasons, um, it's because, like, um, like, oh, like, vaccines have, like, aborted fetal cells in them, which, like, I guess they were, like, developed using aborted fetal cells or something, but, like, they don't have it anymore, so it's, like, I don't know, but, like, as this hospital is pointing out, uh, fetal cells apparently have been used in common medicines, uh, oh, uh, such as Tylenol, Peptal Bismol, Aspirin, uh, as Aspirin, Tums, Lipitar, it, the list goes on, right? Uh, a, a whole bunch of common vaccines that you would have to be, uh, that are in the same category as the uh, COVID-19 vaccine, and their use of fetal cell lines, right? Um, so the, this hospital is making, like, their, uh, their uh, staff, if they want to get a religious exemption, they have to like sign like a, a, a waiver saying like, oh, I promise not to use any of these very common medicines. Um, yeah, you definitely need to be consistent, I guess. Um, you can't just ch pick and choose the, uh, the uh, aborted cetal, fetal cells that you don't... What am I trying to say? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. 
you know, well, wow, what a great, what a great uh, r r news source of news uh, this this video is. Um, yeah, you get it, you get it. It's pretty silly. Um, let's just move on. Taliban militants take swan seemed pedal bow rides in Afghan National Park. So, like, I think last week we covered the story of how. Um, Oh, did you know? First of all, I should say, did you know that uh, the Taliban now controls Afghanistan? Yeah, that's a lot of thing that, uh, that ha that's a big thing that happened, I guess. Uh, f last week we covered how they were like all, all enjoying an amusement park um, somewhere, like uh, the Taliban, right? They're all, they were all um, enjoying the bumper cars or whatever, um, and then they burned it down. They burned it down after they were all having a great time because there was like statues that went against Islam. And it's like, can't you just like take down the statues? Why do you have to burn down the entire amusement park? But okay, look at look at this nice thing now. They're they're now enjoying the boat rides. You know the uh, the swan boat rides in Kemp, uh, in Afghan National Park. Wow, the Taliban really does like having fun. Um, but but my thought is like, are they gonna burn these now too? These these swan boats because they're like against Islam. <laughs> I don't know. Probably this just makes me sad because can't you guys just have fun? Can't you guys just have one nice thing in Afghanistan like these nice swan boats? Or an amusement, you could have had an amusement park if you guys didn't burn it down. Sorry, I'm still kind of mad about that. Why would you burn it down after, see, after I enjoy something, after I enjoy an amusement park, my, uh, my immediate response isn't to burn it down. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just so upset about this, this article. That, not even this article, just last week's article. <sighs> we, we need to move on. Viagra thief. Not a hardened criminal, lawyer says. I mean, is, is this article going to be better than that headline? I don't think it is. Basically, yeah, this guy, okay, I, I don't, I'm not even going to read this article because I hardly care. But, but this article is kind of similar to that. Pennsylvania man charged with felony held on $50,000 bond for 43 cent theft, right? So there's a homeless man. He walked into a convenience store. He saw a sign for a Mountain Dew bottle, two for three dollars. He assumed that one Mountain Dew bottle then was one fifty. He slapped down a two dollar, or not two dollar. Well, he might have. He slapped. <laughs> I don't know. He slapped two dollars on the counter, anyways, and walked out. There, I guess there was no one at the cash register or whatever. He so he thought he had actually overpaid. Uh, he didn't know that it was actually uh, two. Uh, that a, a, a one bottle of Mountain Dew was actually two twenty nine, not one fifty, uh, because you need to get two for the promotion, I guess, plus fifty three cents of tax, um, so, or plus twenty nine cents of tax. I mean, so it, in total, he had shorted the store forty three cents on accident, honest mistake, right? Um, that this poor man had had done, right? This poor homeless man, by the way. Um, and, but the store freaked out. The store called the police, who tracked this homeless man down, and tr uh, the police officers charged him with a felony, locked him on a $50,000 cash-only bond, and is now facing the possibility up to seven years in prison for a 43-cent theft. Um, and this is because... Um, in, uh, I don't know if this is like this in every state, but at least in Pennsylvania, they have a, uh, a three strikes law, right? Uh, for retail theft, doesn't, it doesn't consider the value of the item in the third arrest, right? So if you have stolen uh, three things from, um, or if you have pre previously stolen two things from like a retail store, on your third arrest, that is uh, charged as like a, th a felony, right? No matter how uh, much it is, even if it's just 43 cents. Uh, he had just, uh, the, the homeless man, right? More than 10 years ago, uh, like stole a tank of gasoline and drove off without paying. Another time he had stolen a pair of shoes from Kmart that costed like $40. And so yeah, he uh, in total probably stole less than like $100. 
uh, worse and stuff, but is now facing like like seven years in prison. Like that's ridiculous. And like, okay, fifty thousand dollar bond. How is a homeless man gonna pay that when he can barely like, you know, find enough food to eat? You know, like probably. Like I don't know much about this man, but yeah, yeah, very, very, very sad. Let's move on to our mech, not our mechst story. Look at this house right here. How much? It's pretty ridiculous, don't you think? Uh, it's in Boston. Recently, it sold for 1.25 million dollars, um, and there are a few shots of the inside. Uh, very, very, very uh, skinny house, I would say. Um, 10 feet wide house with only 1,165 square feet. Um, apparently four floors though. Um, and, and there's like something smart I could say about like the housing market or something. Like it's ridiculous that like this house costs $1.25 million. That's outrageous. Um, but like, I don't know. Also like the, it says that there's a, the, a, a family of four bought, a family of four bought this house. That's what kind of surprised me a lot about this. How is a family of four going to live in a 1100 foot home that's 10 feet wide? Well, apparently, like, um, they have bunk beds for the, for the kids. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's move on to our next article, which is about a Kansas boy's book collection that he entered at the state fair. Well, included uh, in his bug collection was a sample of this type of bug, which is a uh, spotted lanternfly. Uh, and apparently, uh, that is a... The spotted lantern, lanternfly is an invasive species from China. Oh my God! Um, but it had never been uh, detected in Kansas before, which is interesting. It had only been detected in like the Northeast uh, United States, and it just act absolutely devastates, you know, like crops, right? Just devours crops or whatever. Uh, and I think the nearest uh, spot where it's been uh, found, where it's like known to like exists is like is like over 700 miles away so um yeah there was a federal investigation um because they're like how did this uh how did this invasive species get into kansas like 800 miles away and and i mean the the bug i think was dead um oh yeah they think it came on a camper oh i just i hate looking at it it looks so gross it makes me want to gag there's tears in my eyes oh Oh, God. Let's move on to our last article. Runner in brain costume attempting marathon world record. This guy. <laughs> he looks so dumb. <laughs> he's, ra he's raising it for charity, I think. For a brain injury charity, right? He's raising money. He's going to be the first person, I, I guess the first person to run a marathon while dressed as a human brain. Wow. Um, now that is uh, impressive. The fastest marathon dressed as a brain. You know, at at a certain at a certain point, you know, the the record the records kind of start to get ridiculous, right? Because you're like, oh, oh I don't know, I'm like fastest uh, six point seven miles run on stilts uh, backwards. That's that's like the that's does it doesn't that seem like a record that would be like in in the genus Guinness book of world records? Uh, is, uh, there's something you know like just super specific and strange. I think this counts, um, but you know what? I I don't mean to be like putting this guy down. Like good for him for running a marathon dressed as a brain, I guess, and for raising money for charity. Puts a little smile on my face, I guess. Okay. Well, I mean, that's all the news I have. Thank God.